Hey, what's going on, YouTube? This is Vincent B. back again in the garden. To the left, we can see the raised beds, tomatoes, the nasturiums in front. Over here, we have newly planted zucchinis, eggplant, tomatoes, squashes, and cucumbers in the back. And today, we're battling powdery mildew. It's been very rainy here in Ohio. And because of that, we have a lot of this powdery mildew just cropping up overnight. So as you can see, it's getting pretty bad. So I've been cutting leaves off to keep the airflow in the sunlight, but it's just been so rainy. So let's get a good look at these squashes. Now this is a hybrid system of hydroponics and organics. Organics because they're in a bucket, but hydroponics because the bottom of the bucket is filled with rocks and water that is fed through a control bucket with a float valve to keep the water just at the right height gravity fed from a 30 gallon reservoir so I don't have to keep watering every day but we have to do something about this mildew so I have a two gallon jug sprayer here and I've already put two tablespoons it's two tablespoons of uh, baking soda, two tablespoons of baking soda, and about a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons of Dawn dish soap, and now we're going to put in some neem oil, which is a pretty thick unless you warm it up, so I'm letting it sit in the sun here, and I think I forgot my tablespoon. I don't know where the tablespoon went, but we're just going to measure it. We're just going to eyeball it. I'd say this cap's about a teaspoon. So let's go ahead and put in one heaping, two, three heaping, four, five, six. That should be about two tablespoons of neem oil. Go ahead and get that all in there. Sit in there real good. I should get it all over my hands pretty good there. Which it's organic, so it shouldn't hurt anything. And we'll just seal this up. I'm all slippery now. Couple of pumps here. I'm just going to apply mainly to the front of the leaf. That's shaking up real good. Make sure the lid's on real good. Put up a little bit more. Go ahead and just start spraying those leaves. Mainly the front. I'll do a little bit of the back. Probably wouldn't hurt. And I probably should just start with a section. See how this works, but I'm pretty confident that we'll be just fine. Use this a bunch of times. And I'm going to 
gonna go ahead and just coat everything that I can get to buckets and everything. And this will be good for controlling bugs. Some people say it can hurt the bees, but I've heard that isn't really true. I've never seen any dead bees or any reduction in the amount of bees after spring, so It'll probably just be one time spray of neem oil. And then we'll just go with baking soda and dish soap. As neem oil is rather expensive, and I don't want to overdo it. We got tomatoes too. Buckets. Mainly, it's the squash. They're having no problems. I'm gonna square all the way down onto the stalks too, cause that's what the beetles like to attack. Get all up under here. And really, anywhere, any surface, you're gonna be a breeding ground for the mildew, especially the tops of the leaves. But, if you hit the stems, it'll probably protect the stems, too. Again, hitting the buckets. we got a bunch of stuff coming up there. Let's make some deal coming up. we got some zucchinis back here. We should bring the camera around. I don't know if I can really get in here with it, though. Hopefully you can hear me with this new mic. I'll go ahead and get the camera. Hit up underneath a little bit. See the mildew doesn't hit underneath as much, but the bugs like to go underneath, so... This will act as a dual protection against bugs and mildew. Good stuff. Maybe next time we'll hook up the GoPro. No way. You can see what I'm doing better. See if we're still recording. Alright, looks like we are. Let's get a little bit closer so you can see what's going on here. See, all the leaves are coated pretty good. This one, can you see right there? White spot. Kind of slipping out of my hands. Okay. Come around here. Just a quick spray, just enough. You can see it almost immediately go away. I don't know if you can see that. The white spot just disappeared. Oh, it's all over the back. Let's bring you in here and check this out. See what you're seeing here. Yeah, right there, I think. You can see it. See that white? It just disappears. Amazing. Underneath. A little bit. Hit the stem a little. Hit the bucket a little. Try not to hit the flowers. We don't want to hurt the pollinators. 
I don't think it will hurt them. I just watched a few videos of people using neem and they said that it's not going to hurt the bees. What's hurting the bees is the glyphosate. And that's what's killing us. That's why we got to grow our own. Glyphosate is no bueno. There's a doctor I was watching and he said glyphosate and deuterium overdose. That's what's killing everybody. And deuterium is a uh, hydrogen molecule. And it's also called heavy water. But it's basically a toxic chemical that's concentrated and processed foods and uh, GMOing the crops is also a cause of it I say it doesn't really I think it was MI Gardner was saying it's not really underneath so much but I'm seeing it under there so and I definitely don't want it to spread to my zucchini and cucumbers here because they're just in full production. And we don't want the dreaded squash beetles and stink bugs getting in here either. So I'm really going to spray up underneath these new leaves. These zucchinis I just planted a few weeks ago into these buckets. And already you can see them taking off. Cucumbers are just growing like crazy. Every time I look, there seems to be more big cucumbers to pick. I'm going to get all the way up under here, get the buckets, get the leaves. Get on the new floor. I heard the neem oil is just the best thing to use, but you can use any oil. Even uh, vegetable oil, which is probably about the only thing it's good for. I don't have any because I don't eat it. But it's very bad for you. I'd probably rather eat neem oil. Which I heard is uh, good against certain uh, viruses that have been going around. The mind said neem seeds. I ordered some neem oil capsules last year when it was going around. And I never got it, so I don't know. At least I don't know if I got it. I was sick a few times. But not that bad. Like a day or two, I was kind of fatigued. We're getting a lot of uh, peel bugs back here in this strawberries. So here's the uh, reservoir. You can see it's about empty. So I'm going to fill that up and mix in my hydroponic nutrients, which I'm going to be using these uh, powders. Which is kind of like a miracle grow. It's from Fox Farm. It's just an expensive miracle grow with different blends. But I use that with some fish. And some C90 sea salts for minerals. And uh, there's also a slow release organic into these buckets themselves, which really is what makes this system so great. Is that you have the best of both worlds the hydroponics in the potting soil, which is a bit more of a cocoa mix, but I mix all kinds of good organic stuff like bone meal. And, uh, blood meal and diatomaceous earth and uh, got a little bit of white already starting back behind this cucumber. You really want to take your time and get every leaf you can get to. You want to get the bugs anywhere safe to hide, and you want to peel any yellowing leaves. Like I was saying, the more airflow and sunlight you get in here, the better. And you probably want to pick those leaves up and compost them. Some people say burn them. So don't inoculate your soil. But it's basically everywhere anyways. You're not going to 
get rid of powdery mildew. The best thing is just try to keep it under control. Okay, so we got some pots back here that I'm gonna plant my newly planted lettuce, my little hydroponic seed starter here. It has a chamois that wicks up through the lid here. I cut a couple of slots and it wicks up into that cocoa and uh, does a really great job of starting seeds. Um, we got a tomato back here. We'll hit a little bit. They say to do this in the morning. I'm doing it in the evening. I'm going to be up late working, so not a morning person, although I'd like to get back on more of a morning routine. As long as you're not doing this in the direct sunlight. Now, another thing you could use is milk, which is actually good for the sunlight to hit it. Something with the protein. Oh, yeah, that's pretty bad back here. But being that the sun is down, we still got a couple hours before dark. I think this light spring will pretty much dry up from the wind before the temperature drops too much. Which it's not going to get that cold anyways. So I don't think spraying this light will hurt anything. Some more white spots. They just wash away with this stuff. It's going to be pretty effective. I'm not spraying the kit. Oh, wanted to get the wrong way. But you can see all the spots are gone. This is another control bucket that I have at the end. Just to make sure the water is going all the way through the system. It allows me to see how much water is in the system quickly. And I could bail a little bit out. Throw it in a watering can. And then take my reservoir water over here to the raised bed and water by hand these tomatoes, which are just going crazy. You can see the one on the end there is almost six feet tall. I just put up these poles here to create a trellis. You can see there's a little bit of blight on these tomatoes. Trying to keep that under control. This spray should help with that too. Well, the tomatoes for the most part look pretty healthy. I'm just going to give them a little bit of this. Especially where they're touching. I think that's when you have the most problems. You want to keep airflow and sunlight between there. Just go all the way around, spread it in the light spread. Cracky strawberries. We'll give them a quick spray. Some peel bugs. I'll come around behind here. Everything a quick spray. Pulling off any diseased leaves. All up under there. Yep. I got some more back here. So with this trellis system, I'm going to run strings to hold some of these up. They're starting to flop over. We'll do an update on that maybe tomorrow. I'm out here working. Most of the day already, so probably go inside and back to my crypto farming. Now that the sun's going down, just trying to really get whatever they might be touching. There we go. 
Alright. Alright, we come around here. All right, that should do it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use up the rest of this, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video. I think. I guess I could edit it out. There's a PVC trellis. If you can see there, a couple white spots. Watch how it just disappeared. See that? Just gone. Just washing it right off, at least it appears to. We'll see if it comes back though. That'll be the real test, huh? Just massive squash plants, quite impressive. This system really works good. Which is why I'm doing so many videos on it. There's no pumps involved, it's all gravity fed. It's very little work to keep it going. You just fill up your reservoir. You could even hook it up to a rain barrel or a, rain, a gutter system and harvest rainwater, and it will just pretty much take care of itself. It's like a little bit of white up under there. If you guys can see that. So whatever it's uh, not getting sunlight and air is where you get problems. So what? You want to make sure they go up along this trellis like that. Keep them up off the ground. Yeah, I see a little bit of white residue starting on the cucumbers. Definitely don't like that. They're what's most susceptible is your cucumbers and squash. So I really want to make sure get those good. Keep this under control. A little bit of preventative maintenance. But these are some massive plants, so what is that? Like some kind of bug. So I've been blessed not to have a lot of bugs, but the neighbors got bird feeders. I think the birds do a good job of keeping the insects under control. So I got some potatoes back here. I'll bring you around to see the back of the garden here. A beautiful backyard. Over this time of day when the sun's going down. I love the smell of neem oil on there. Some people don't like it, but I think it smells really nice, nutty flavor. These potatoes a little bit. And then I'm gonna get back in here. The back of this cucumber plant. Really get up under the leaves good from this angle. And this takes a little time to really get every nook and cranny, but trust me, it'll be worth it. Let's see, I'm gonna have to go around here. Get underneath these one more time. It's got a nice shiny coat on it. Like I said, you definitely should try it out on a small area first. I get these 
strawberries because oh wow there's a big one holy crap I hope we're still recording because this strawberry is amazing come out of the fabric pot here it's where the peel bugs love to get on let's see are we still recording Yes, I think so. Check out that berry. Oh, wow. I want to bite into it now, but I'm going to wait. I really don't want these cucumbers to go back. Although, they're probably getting towards the end. Anyways, but it's a shame if they just turn into a giant mildew factory. Same thing with these potatoes, they're going to start dying off here soon. Go ahead and move these leaves around, get all up in there. If you see any white stuff, that's diatomaceous earth powder that I spray in there. Which is uh, good for insects as well as uh, as a uh, calcium source, especially for potatoes. If you don't want that blossom end rot, I'm gonna give them lots of calcium. And I'm thinking that diatomaceous earth should be a good calcium supplement versus something like eggshells or milk, because um, it also deters insects. So, I think that's about it for today. Oh, you know what? Before I go real quick, let's check out what we've been harvesting over here. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. Check that out. There's a little rabbit fur in there. Whoa. Alright, slippery. These are real slippery. Cucumber falling off. But look at all these squash and cucumbers. And I've just been handing them out like crazy to the neighbors. Made some uh, squash uh, lasagna. Last night, so good. Grilled squash. Um, squash and potatoes and peppers. Got to make some pickles with all these cucumbers. So maybe that's another video. But for now, we're going to go ahead and sign up. With the, uh, Nice view of the whole garden there. Everything's looking great. So again, that's about a tablespoon of baking soda per gallon. Unless uh, you got a really bad outbreak, then you can maybe go up to two tablespoons. You don't want to go more than that from what I understand. And then the uh, oil is optional, a tablespoon of neem oil is supposed to be really good though, and uh, the Dawn dish soap which acts as a surfacant, it also kills insects, and uh, the soap helps the oil mix to the water better and uh, acts as a surfacant to give you a nice even spread of oil, baking soda, and soap which is going to do great things. You could also put in some uh, kelp powder to give a, a foiler at the same time. Um, basically anything that you, you feed the plant with, you can uh, use a smaller amount for a foiler food. You just want to do a small area first and make sure it's not going to burn the leaf. You don't want to do it when the sun's hitting. You know, you want it several hours before the sun hitting your plants so they don't burn and um, 
Yeah, unless you're using uh, milk, which is all right for the sun to hit, evidently, because the protein, um, something happens when the sun hits it that helps kill the mildew. Okay, and that would also be a good calcium supplement. As far as uh, the other insecticide, the uh, diatomaceous earth, I'll go ahead and show you what I'm using. It's a food grade diatomaceous earth. And it came with this little uh, duster thing that you squeeze and it puts out a nice fine mist of powder um, that I go around and hit the uh, under the leaves, top of the leaves, stalks. Doesn't seem to do uh, any kind of detriment to the plant, even when you just totally coat it with that powder. And then when it rains, it's going to wash off into the soil and provide a good calcium source. And uh, you can even sprinkle a little around the base of your tomatoes for extra calcium. Uh, you could also use bone meal or eggshells or something. Of course, you probably want to blend the eggshells up to get a quicker uh, release of your calcium so you don't get blossom end rot, which is those spots at the base of your tomato if you've ever seen those brown spots a lot of times that's either too much watering not enough watering or calcium not enough calcium so all right hope you enjoyed the video hope uh this new mic works good and let's get it to the video editor and uh see how it comes out so have a good one talk to you again here soon